So by having an extra 10 years to compound the money, 30 years total instead of 20 years total, it reduces the amount of capital needed by about half. So this is the power of time. This is why I started with time. No matter how old someone is, the best time to start is really immediately. Hey everyone, this is Ian. I'm back with another video about dividend growth investing. So one of you just asked me a question very recently in the comments, and it was a question about, hey Ian, I'm 40 years old. How much money do I need to invest right now in dividend stocks? So today's question, or today's video answers that particular question and also discusses the general theme of how much money do I need? How much money do I need invested in dividend growth? stocks. So before I get into specific numbers, I want to start with just some general themes. One general theme in the world of dividend growth investing is it's always better to get started earlier. So the best time to start was yesterday. The second best time is today. I've done some videos here on YouTube about investing with div dividend reinvestment plans or DRIPS and those plans make it very easy, very accessible for anyone to get started with dividend growth investing for as little as $25 per month. It's amazing. And so with plans like that, there really are no excuses. There are no excuses not to get started immediately, at least in my opinion. So the general theme here is time is more valuable than money. Time will allow your money to compound over the years. As you reinvest your dividends, as you reinvest and enjoy capital appreciation over time, it's really time that will allow your dividend snowball to accumulate. And so the most important thing, or one of the most important things in terms of reaching one's goals in dividend growth investing is getting started earlier rather than later. That being said, it's never too late in my opinion. It's never too late and there are ways to compensate for getting started a little bit later. Usually it's by investing more capital, being a little bit scrappier, being a little bit scrappier with one's budgeting, getting their budget under control, getting their living expenses under control and really doubling down on one's investments. So don't worry, don't worry if you feel like you're a latecomer, you didn't get started as early as you would have liked. I think none of us got is started as early as we liked. When I look at what I've accomplished, I now own a portfolio of over 30 stocks. I've been investing for over 20 years, but I made a lot of mistakes over the way uh, over the years. I've learned a lot over the years, and um, I surely wish that I I latched onto this dividend growth model from the beginning. But that wasn't the case. I started experimenting with dividends when I was early on, when I was in high school, but that wasn't my only strategy. I tried all kinds of stuff over the years. I've tried trading, I've tried penny stocks, all kinds of crazy stuff. I've tested it all. And one of the reasons I created this YouTube channel is I wanna share my experiences with the world because I'm hoping that other people out there, they don't necessarily have to go through all the trial and error that I faced over my investing career. They may be able to find the strategy that works for them sooner. So even in my personal case, I wish I had started even earlier. I started in high school, maybe it would have been nice if I started even before high school, middle school, lower school. Maybe it would have been nice if I latched on to dividend growth investing 100% strategy from the beginning, but that wasn't the case. And so if you feel like you're a little bit late to the game, don't worry about it. We're all, we're all late to the game, unless literally you started when you were, you were basically just, just being born. So, so don't worry about it. So next thing is, so we talked about time. Time is very important in terms of determining how much money one needs to invest. Another important factor is the budget. If one can get their budget under control, one can reduce their living expenses, less money is needed for financial freedom. The ultimate goal here is to have a massive amount of cash flow, a massive amount of passive income that will one day cover one's entire living expenses. Well, here's the deal. If you can get your living expenses to be lower, Maybe there's some bills that you can cut. Maybe you can move to a cheaper area. Maybe there are things that just don't make sense in your life that you can eliminate that will leave your quality of life the same, if not higher, while reducing expenses. If 
you're able to do that, it's going to be easier to get to financial freedom, financial freedom because less money will be needed. You'll have less money that you need on a yearly basis to cover all of your living expenses. So that's a really important factor when determining how much you need to invest in dividend stocks. A tip here on budgeting. When one first starts building their dividend stock portfolio, I like to subscribe to the model of going all in. In the early, early years, you may want to consider making extra sacrifices. You may want to really taper down your budget. Maybe there are some basic things that you just love and you're going to miss them if you get rid of them, but you're going to do that consciously. You're going to do it for maybe five or 10 years. You're going to do it on purpose because you know it's going to pay off in the long run. This is what I call delayed gratification. You suppress your lifestyle right now. You suppress it a little bit because you know that these are the years you want to get your money working for you. You want to get it in the dividend stocks. You want it to start compounding. The more you get in sooner, one has time on their side. And so it's not only about getting the budget under control for the long term, but in the short run, are there extra things that could be done? Are there extra ways to get the budget down? And maybe just temporary things, but they free up some cash in the short run to invest extra in the stock market. That is a tip that I think all of us should go home and think about. And at the end of the day, when one cuts an expense, ultimately, when one is in this and has purpose and is in it for the long run and is investing in dividend stocks, one may think, hey, this is gonna mess with my quality of life. That's not actually the case. The sense of purpose, the sense of greater purpose behind dividend investing, in my experience, has been so great, so overwhelming, it's such a mission of mine that it overshadows some of these things that may, may need to be cut in life, some of these, these budgetary items that I may have to forego until the long run. That is okay. And dividend investing oftentimes makes up for it because it's fun and it gives purpose. And I actually did a video about this. I'll link to it in the description. So please go and check that out. So moving on, ultimately, let's go back to the question here. Question is, Ian, how much money do I need to invest? Well, there's two factors. The factors are this. What is, what is your cost of living per year? Do you need $30,000 a year? Do you need 50? Do you need 100? Do you need maybe only 20? Whatever it is, understand your true cost of living per year all in. That's important because that's the amount of dividend income that you need to have rolling in to experience financial freedom. So once all of that income is rolling in, you can live off of that income without tapping in to your principal, without selling stock, and that's financial freedom. So factor one. Factor two is how many years do you have left? So that's a calculation of when do you want financial freedom, when do you want your retirement, and how old are you now? You subtract one from the other, you get the number of years left. So I want to take some hypothetical examples here. I want to do the math. And I want to do it first because the, the person who asked this question said, hey, I'm 40 years old, how much do I need? So I'm going to start with that. If you are 40 years old, let's assume you want 50000 a year. Let's assume financial freedom for you. You've done your budget. You need $50,000 a year to live. And that's, that's your, your full budget. Well, if you're 40 years old, Let's say that hypothetically you want financial freedom by the time you're 60. So a little bit of an early retirement, 60 instead of 65, you got 20 years left. So here's how, here's how big your portfolio needs to be in 20 years. In 20 years, assuming that the average dividend rate is still about 3%, which it probably will be for a world-class blue chip company, you need a portfolio that is $1.667 million. $1.667 million at a 3% dividend yield will yield every single year $50,000. That's your financial freedom. So now we need to work back a little bit. If I need $1.667 million 20 years from now, how much do I need to invest now? Let's work back, a work back plan. And so I just did some modeling in Excel. I did a very simple calculation. It's rough, it's back of envelope. Surely. I invite everyone after this video to go home to run an Excel model, 
to look at your own situation, how many years you have, how much you think you can contribute per year, and model it out. It's real easy. So today it's just hypothetical, it's real back of envelope, but anyone can do this. So what I basically did is I assumed, hey, over the 20 years, I'm gonna receive a 7% annualized compounded return. And this includes dividends being reinvested, this includes capital appreciation, all in. I think 7% is a little conservative because there's certain stocks I own where the dividend alone gets raised 7% per year and that doesn't even count for the capital appreciation. That said, 7%, I think that's a realistic conservative model and I think it's probably worth looking at these days because the stock market has gone up a lot. We're at a um, historic high right now, market's gone up a lot, so if we do see any kind of corrections in the coming years, it's probably safer to model 7%. So let's assume I make a lump sum investment right now. Let's assume I'm 40 years old, I need 50 grand a year in 20 years. How much do I need to invest right now to achieve my cash flow goal? Well, I ran the model in Excel and it's basically $431,000. So if I invest $431,000 right now, year one, compounded at 7% for 20 years, when I achieve financial freedom at age 60, I will have $50,000 a year in cash flow. So fact of the matter is though, most people watching probably don't have $431,000 sitting around. Basically, this is just for illustration purposes. In reality, no one is, or not no one, but most people probably aren't gonna do the lump sum investment in year one. They'll probably spread it out over, over all the years little bit invested each year. Basically what this comes down to is about in the first 10 years, one is going on any given year is going to be investing between 43 and $50,000 per year. So for the first 10 years, if someone's got a 20 year time horizon, needs that 50,000 a year in passive income, one's really looking about 43 to 50,000 per year invested into the stock market. Now certainly years 11 through 20, one should continue to invest, and by investing in those years, that will certainly help as well. But the fact of the matter is, as one gets closer to their financial freedom age, there's less compounding that can happen. So it's really important to get the money working as soon as possible. So let's take another example here, another hypothetical example. Instead of 40 years old, let's say someone is 30 years old, 30 years old. Let's say the goal is the same, $50,000 a year by the time they're 60. That's financial freedom. So 30 years old, obviously, if you're retiring or financial, enjoying financial freedom at 60, one needs one, one is going to have 30 years instead of 20 years. And let's say the goal is the same, $50,000 a year in cash flow. I still need a portfolio that's $1.667 million. $1.66 million yield at a 3% dividend yield is $50,000 a year in dividends. But because I have an extra 10 years, when I model this out in Excel, if I do a lump sum investment in year one, guess how much? $219,000. That's about half. That's about half as much as I need if I start when I'm 40. So by having an extra 10 years to compound the money, 30 years total instead of 20 years total, it reduces the amount of capital needed by about half. So this is the power of time. This is why I started with time. No matter how old someone is, the best time to start is really immediately. Even if one doesn't have a lot to contribute right away, just getting themselves in the game, just getting started makes a world of difference. And so what this really comes down to in the second scenario is one on any given year for the first 10 years will probably be investing between 22 and $30,000 per year to achieve that goal of financial freedom, 50,000 a year by the time they're 60. Now, obviously not everyone is trying to live off of 50,000 a year. Some people may need more, some people may need less. Not everyone is going to experience 7% per year returns. Some may be less, some people may experience more. In my experience, I've experienced more than that. But again, the market has gone up quite a bit, so it's probably, probably reasonable and conservative to model with 7%. And the other thing is this model is very, very back of envelope. It's just for illustra Ill illustrative purposes. I'm trying to basically illustrate a point. And so obviously one, most people out there aren't gonna just do a lump sum in year one and let it ride. It's going to be a game of dollar cost averaging over time. And so it, 
Clearly, however, these numbers clearly give a starting point and they show the magnitude of money that needs to be invested to reach financial freedom. So I hope this video was helpful. I know I'm getting a lot of questions. It's hard to keep up with them all, but I am writing them all down. I will answer all of the questions here that are coming my way. So I thank you. I really, really do appreciate all of these wonderful questions that are coming through. They mean the world to me. And if you enjoyed the video today, I please invite you to comment, subscribe, like the video. That all means the world to me. Before I leave today, just a friendly disclaimer. My name is Ian Lopuck. This is PPCE and YouTube channel. I am not a licensed financial advisor, and this video is not financial advice. Today's video is just for your fun and entertainment. If you are going to go out and invest capital in the stock market, please do consult a licensed financial advisor first. My YouTube channel is all about investing. I've got a lot of videos here on about dividend growth investing. That's my passion. My passion is getting massive amounts of cash flow that cover living expenses. One parting thought today, all of the models today really didn't include extra money that one has stashed away in a retirement vehicle, doesn't take into account social security, other forms of income, doesn't take into account part-time jobs. And so one thing also worth mentioning with all of the modeling today is how much does one really need? Is it, are you going to be 100% funded through dividends or are there other means of cash flow, other means of capital that can be used to pay for living expenses? If there are other means, pensions, for example, all, all sorts of things, it will affect one's model when they work it out. So at the end of the day, the homework for everyone is to go out, put your own numbers into Excel, and start working on a plan. Start seeing where you need to be, and then working back from there what you need to do right now. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next PPCE and Dividend Investing video.